Good morning, Opostas. We'll be doing the bindi curry, no cutting series. I'll start with two tablespoons of oil, and arrange the washed and drained and dried. These bindis are completely dry. Just arrange them on a single layer. You want them to be nicely roasted, and then arrange. small tomatoes if you are using large tomatoes you need to deseed them or you need to scoop them and remove the seeds so this will form the sauce and a couple of green chilies if you like for the spice and we can put a pip and put the masalas in it or you can add masalas carefully over the bindi itself let's start with the stopwatch So I'll just add quarter teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of chili powder, and quarter teaspoon of garam masala over the bindi itself, and hope that it doesn't char. That's it. Close. Cook on high for four or five minutes. Enough for the tomatoes to disintegrate. Remove the bindi, mash the tomatoes, mix everything in, and you have your bindi curry ready. You can extend this with any vegetable you can think of. Instead of plain bindi, you can use stuffed bindi. Let's say you use bindi stuffed with paneer, and it will become a stuffed bindi curry. So this is a very simple template. You can extend it across vegetables. The core idea is to caramelize the vegetables and the tomato together. The tomato forms the sauce for the vegetables. So a dry curry becomes a gravy. Sanjay Kumar, bindi is one of your favorite vegetables. I got a fresh um, a pack of it yesterday from a farm of a friend. So these are absolutely delicious. I want to use them up all in one recipe or another. And they come out beautifully in our post. So I keep going back to bindi recipes. And it's ultra simple too. No cutting, put it in. They come out uh, gorgeous, colorful. You can't go wrong with it. This is likely to be a six to seven minute recipe. Just mash it up on opening. Remove the bindi. Mash it up on opening. and you have your curry ready in minutes you can add some ginger garlic paste you can add thadka extension or infinite you can add your own spice mixes and if you want to make a chinese version of this use soy sauce vinegar chili sauce you want an italian version of this use chili flakes italian seasoning And uh, mix in a bit of grated cheese at the end. Bindi and tomato is common to all cuisines, so the stuff you add along with them will change the parentage of the recipe. Now, instead of stuffing the bindi with paneer, you can stuff it with cheese. If you are looking for a, a continental version, or you can stuff it with tofu if you are looking for a Chinese version. So, just keep the basic theme in mind and play with it with different ingredients, different spices, different flavorings, and you can extend the same theme. You can translate it across cuisines seamlessly. The core thing common to all cuisines is the bindi should not be overcooked. It should not be undercooked. Tomatoes need to be caramelized. So as long as you are able to take care of this, extension to any cuisine is possible. That's one. The vessel is short because there is not much moisture left. 
and let it go for around four five whistles or five minutes so that the bindi is nicely roasted As long as the cooking time of the vegetables do not cross five minutes, you are safe. You see slightly longer whistles. This is because the tomatoes have started leaking moisture, so the steam buildup is faster. That's it. Let me switch off. Release the pressure. Remove the bindi, mash the tomatoes, mix everything, and your curry is ready. You can stretch it by mixing in cream, by mixing in yogurt, by mixing in coconut milk, by mixing in nut paste, or by mixing in staples. Okay, that's how it looks. You just scrape the. I could have probably used a pot and pot. Look at this, nicely roasted. We have used just two tablespoons of oil, so no need to filter out the oil. I'm going to mash it as it is. You can add in more flavoring if you like. Mix in some kasuri methi. Mix in some ginger garlic paste. So you have the sauce ready. Can use a blender, but it kind of dulls the color. So I prefer a masher, and this is also easy to clean up. Just ensure that you don't splash the hot liquid. Don't do this. Just uh, with a rocking motion, smash the whole thing to a nice sauce. There you go. You can serve it as it is. Mix the bindi and serve it as it is, or mix in some fresh cream to stretch it to make it into a Malay version. So you get this nice and rich, glossy gravy. Look at that. Instead of bindi, if you had used paneer, this would be paneer makhani. Pretty simple, no? There you go. That is your. Mix it and let it sit for the flavors to seep in. I should have presented it better, but there you go. That is your bindi curry. Done and dusted in less than ten minutes. Do try this out and post your validations. Taksha is saying you use a masher to develop your muscles. <laughs> Actually, I use this because it is uh, uh, cleaning up is very easy, unlike a blender. You just dip it in water it's clean thanks a lot please try and post your validations